the security checks so everybody's now taking their breakfast still so i would like to welcome everyone here in person at the european parliament but also the ones who are joining us um, from online from all over europe um, italy germany norway i think and also um, israel really nice having you here thank you um so um your moderators of this morning will be um, my colleague um, Elisa Baldini. She's the Secretary General of the International Federation of Anthroposophic Medical Associations, um, IVAA. And me, I'm Adriana Waltz. Um, I'm um, the board member of the ETCMA, which is the European Association of Traditional Chinese Medicine, and um, representing um, here Eurochem. So um, Eurochem is actually bringing together um, different organizations representing patients and also health professionals within CHEM. And our aim is actually of um, promoting to create health. So we cover a broad range of therapies, so under which the anthroposophic medicine, but also acupuncture, herbal medicine, and traditional medicines. So um, Eurochem also runs the MEP interest group of integrative medicine and health. And um, they are working actually, actually collectively to um, promote inclusion of CAM as part of the integrative medicine and health in all possible European um, health policies. Um, so, yes, so actually we, um, yeah, I would like to give the word here to Alisa. Thank you very much. Um, without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Mrs. Ripa, Manuela Ripa, that is hosting this event on behalf of the Interest Group on Integrative Medicine and Health. Uh, Mrs. Ripa is a German MEP from the ODT uh, party that belongs to the Greens IFA group. She has been a member of the BICA committee and she's a member of the ENVI uh, committee and SANTE uh, committee, besides being also a member of the ITRE and INTA committees. Um, in her work in the, as a member of the European Parliament, she, uh, her core themes are health and consumer protections, environment protection, climate protection, biodiversity protection, animal welfare. Um, so thank you so much, Mrs. Ripa, for hosting this event, and I'm happy to give you the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much for this introduction and uh, let me welcome you to today's event um, here in the room and online um, on integrative oncology and I'm very much looking forward to a very fruitful discussion today. What are the facts that we're facing in Europe? Cancer is the second leading cause of death globally and in EU countries. It is incredible that about one in six deaths are due to cancer and even more shocking approximately 300,000 children are diagnosed with cancer each year. In Europe alone, around 26% of all deaths, more than 1.3 million people are caused by cancer. As a member of the Special Committee on Beating Cancer, for me and my group, it was paramount, therefore, to strengthen the prevention of cancer, but not only. Next to the affordability of medicines and treatments, we also called for a holistic approach to care, including access to supportive care services and integrative and complementary medicine and treatments. In today's event, we would like to explore the added values for patients of various integrative treatments and discuss best practices of integration across Europe. Fortunately, there are cures to um, to heal cancer, like classic treatments, options including chemotherapy, immunotherapy, radiotherapy, and surgery. But next to it, there are also complementary treatment options available. Multiple stu studies have demonstrated the benefit and potential of integrative cancer care in reducing patient suffering and improving long-term prospects. This is why we need a holistic approach. The numbers prove it. 24 to 45% of cancer patients in Europe use complementary treatments, depending on the cancer type. And this percentage could definitely be higher if these treatments would be more widely available. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Saarländische Krebsliga, a patient's organization from my home region, 
whose representative Dr. Zeiss is with us here today. They, and especially Mrs. de Temple, who is very active in this field, showed me how hyperthermia can help cancer patients. I learned it from personal stories and visited the hyperthermia clinic in Berg, Bad Bergzabern in Germany, where they showed me on the spot how much these treatments can help patients. But I also learned that it is very difficult in Germany to get this treatment reimbursed. I was surprised by that, especially as in other EU member states like Italy, Poland and the Netherlands, it is covered by the health insurance scheme. We will hear later on more about Italy. In Europe, in the 21st century, patients should not be denied access to a beneficial treatment depending on which member states they live in. Patients' health must be at the center of any policy to tackle cancer. Health is a matter of balancing several factors that contribute to human well-being, including physical, mental, and social well-being. The right to health, which is one of the essential EU values, means that everyone should be entitled to receive high-quality treatment, but also to control their own health and body. This means that patients should be active participants in their own care instead of passive recipients. Everyone should be given the possibility to take informed decision regarding their treatment, no matter in which region or member states they live in. This implies that integrative and complementary medicines methods should be available and affordable for all EU citizens demanding it. And as already mentioned, the fact that so many patients are already deciding to use these types of treatments prove that patients ask for this integrative of conventional and complementary therapies and often cho choose to use complementary therapies to improve their quality of life. Therefore, we need commitment at European level. The motto, United in Diversity, is at the core of our EU foundations. As a member of the Envy and Sun Committee and the Interested <coughs> Group on Integrative Medicine and Health, I'm convinced that if we really want the European Union to be united in diversity, we must create the conditions for this diversity to exist in cancer treatments as, as well. It is crucial to take into account other perspectives and experiences, including in the field of integrative oncology. I am sure that what we will hear this morning will be of inspiration for stakeholders and decision makers and maybe for the next legislature. During this legislative period, we managed to launch the EU Beating Cancer Plan, and I hope that in the next mandate, we will confirm this commitment and that the invaluable knowledge from the integrative oncology field will not remain neglected. So many thanks for being here today, for participating in this event, and I'm very much looking forward to the discussions and to hear what our speakers have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manuela Ripa, um, for your true words and your persistent efforts on this. Um, so without further ado, I will um, introduce Manfred Lucha. He is the Minister of Social Affairs and Integration of Baden-Württemberg. So we have a video message that we will um, show now here on the screen. Dear Mrs. Lipa, dear Mr. Breitkreuz, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your kind invitation and the opportunity to contribute to the digital welcome address. I'm very pleased that you are dedicated this event and our time to exchange best practices in the field of integrative medicine on a European level. It is important to learn from each other and to connect with other experts. Patients, and especially tumor patients, want to be able to choose between different therapeutic offers. This is where integrative medicine is of importance. Baden-Württemberg sees and sizes the opportunities integrative medicine provides. We want to drive research forward. 
In general, we are seeing a growing interest on integrative care. Baden-Württemberg has already responded to this. Complementary medicine is anchored in a Baden-Württemberg's coalition agreement. The land has also provided financial resources stemming from the budget of our strategic dialogue health region Baden-Württemberg. We have used these resources to found the Integrative Medicine Competence Network Baden-Württemberg. Here, different specialist disciplines, practice and research work closely together. Together, they want to develop, introduce and evaluate integrative treatment concepts. And they want to provide best practices. This approach is unique in Germany. The competence network is thus important for more transparency and safety. Our goal is we want to transfer the project's results into standard care. Thank you for your commitment and I wish you a successful conference. Okay, so we can start with our agenda. Um, there's an echo. Okay, thanks. Um, we wanted to have patients at the core of this event. So our first speaker comes from uh, a patient organization from Saarland, the Saarlandisch Krebsliga. So I'm very happy to introduce Dr. Ortwin Zeins, vice president of this organization. Um, Ortwin Zeins uh, studied medicine in Berlin and graduated in 1991. He first worked in dermatology and cardiac surgery. Um, and in 94, he followed, he followed further training in the field of outpatient medicine with a focus on dialysis and oncology. In 2001, he continued his training as a general practitioner in the Department of Internal Medicine at St. Joseph Hospital in Hermeskeil. During this time, he acquired the additional certification of naturopathic medicine and treatment, where um, the main focus that where is and was the main focus of his medical activity. He then followed further training on biological cancer therapy, obtaining a certification in four courses. Um, and now Dr. Zeiss counts on his qualification of psychotherapies on 2008, and he's also an emergency physician. So please, Dr. Zeiss, you have the floor, and I would like to can we ask all the speakers to seek six to seven minutes uh, presentation so we have some time to uh, question and answer us afterwards? Thank you very much for the <clears throat> introduction. I'm always impressed on my own life when I hear <laughs> what I have done until now. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Saarländische Krebsliga and uh, my really chief, uh, Mr. Temple, I will introduce her on the next uh, slide, please. She, when her brother developed a reticular sarcoma, got in contact with uh, conventional medicine and also integrative medicine. And uh, her intervention prolonged the life of her brother from six months, which did tell the conventional medical uh, doctors, to 18 years in reality in a good, and this is important, good quality of life. He passed away in 1981. So she said, when my brother can live for more than six months, I will help, uh, will give my life to help uh, affected people in, with cancer. Show uh, the next slide, please. She <clears throat> founded in 1978 the Saarländische Krebsliga. So it's an organization by affected people for affected people. They were always innovative and in many ways pioneering, and it is her force who gave psychoneuroimmunologic uh, a, a part of um, an integrative treatment together with Professor Zenker. She um, was the first to give tumor conferences with uh, different doctors over patients 
health decisions. She integrated end-of-life care, and they went to schools to, to treat also children with a, a healthy life for themselves, and so on. And there's many more to say, but in seven minutes, this will be enough. The next slide, please. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry. The focus is always on the quality of life of these affected oncology patients. And the Saarländische Krebsliga herself does not work with statistics, but we work with human beings. And we want to help those affected and their families, regardless of social backgrounds. So if there is money needed, they will get a little uh, money. If there is uh, ever support with, with uh, other doctors and so on, we give them support to find their way with their oncological uh, cancer disease. So the next slide, please. What does integrative medicine say for the Saarländische Krebsliga? Medicine has an experience which comes from centuries, not only 20 or 30 years. Integrative medicine has a little negative impact for those affected people, <clears throat> and it always has the focus on the human being and not only on his or her disease, which is very important. We always see the whole human being and not only the cancer uh, to be treated. So in the next slide, I will give you three um, impressive numbers. When we say that human beings consist of 100 trillion cells, and in every cell we have 30,000 up to 100,000 biochemical reactions per second. And per second, we have 30 quintillion biophysical contacts, uh, biophysical, biochemical contacts. I think this is really impressive. And so in treatment, we have to take care of this whole human being <clears throat> and not only a little part of it. I think esteem, humility, and respect is a necessary attitude, also in medical accompaniment of the uh, affected persons. So in the next slide, we will say integrative medicine in cancer therapy says always also complementary medicine, integrative medicine beside the, let's say, normal medicine. Always, and this is very important in cancer therapy, hypothermia right from the start, not only at the end. And always we have to take care of the soul or the psychological situations from the beginning and not somewhere at the end. A uh, few words to hypothermia in the next slide because Dr. Zahindas will take about this top, uh, talk about this topic. We differentiate between whole body hypothermia, which is in a mild or moderate, uh, consider up to 40 degrees, or local, regional local hypothermia as a capacitively coupled electro deep hypothermia to, in the next slide, we will see some uh, <clears throat> machines who do this. On the upper left, you have the regional hypothermia. On the right, you have two um, devices of whole body hypothermia and the German guidelines on hypothermia, which uh, Dr. Sahindas can perhaps tell about more. <clears throat> In the next slide, I will give some information on the advantages of hypothermia. As a fourth pillar, it is a essential part on overall concepts. It makes a an, an significant contribution to the success of complex therapy concepts, and it has no additional burden for affected persons, which is very important. In the next slide, I, it is a seen synergism with uh, chemotherapy and or radiotherapy, and it has an improvement or preservation of quality of life. In the next slide, I show you one patient which uh, I had in my office. He had a pancreas, pancreatic cancer, and the survival rate on pancreatic carcinoma is 10 years, about 10% uh, about five years, and 8% about 10 years. So most people live a few months only. In the next slide, this patient got surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy. 
uh, he had got this is uh, conventional medicine. Then he got local hypothermia from the beginning, nutritional supplements from the beginning, and psychotherapy from the beginning. And he is sane. Any cancer anymore. In the next slide, we have some examples of the members of the Cancer League. Lipos when a person with a liposarcoma lived 15 years after diagnosis, a patient with lung carcinoma, he had liver metastasis, brain metastasis, kidney metastasis. He had a good quality of life for eight years until he died, always with the treatment, which I'll show you afterwards. <clears throat> a patient with a glioblastoma lives since 12 years and still is living. Another person with a pancreatic cancer lives since 13 years after diagnosis and is still living. In the next slide, all got conventional in the Yes, all got conventional or orthodox treatment, all got integrated therapies, hypothermia, <clears throat> and all got psychological support in the community of the Silent Cancer League. So at the end, next slide, please. And I apologize for the German word, Schlussfolgerung, which means conclusion. I forgot to translate. Every human being decides for themselves about their body. Every human being has the right to appropriate therapy, and every human being has the right to financial support from health insurance for the treatment he or she wishes to receive. And in the next slide, I thank you for your intention. <laughs> I'm in time. <laughs> thank you so thank much, you Dr. Much. Zeiss. That's really great. Thank you on the insights on the integrative um, therapies. Um, so I would like to um, introduce Dr. Eran Ben Are. He is the regional ambassador of um, for Europe and the Middle East of the Society of Integrative Oncology. Um, so um, Dr. Ben Are has a really diverse background um, in complementary and traditional medicine. Um, so he's specialized in family um, medicine and has also developed and thought in complementary medicine um, for an educational program at the University of Maryland in the United States. So currently he's serving as um, a co-founder and director of the unit of complementary and traditional medicine at the Department of Family Medicine in Haifa. Um, and he's also the director of the Integrative Oncology Program at Haifa and Western Galilee Oncology Service. So he's involved in various research um, activities, including um, the Middle East Research um, Group on Integrative Oncology, as well as the American Society of Clinical Oncology, where he has um, he's also in the panel um, of um, the guideline developments. So um, he has various publications on integrative oncology, but also on doctor-patient communication and evidence-based medicine. So it's a great honor to have you here. Um, so I will give the floor um, to Dr. Ben Are. Thank you very much for the invitation. I understand that you can hear me clearly. Is it, is it uh, okay? Um, I would, I would speak on behalf of the executive board of the Society for Integrative Oncology about the SAO and uh, maybe open, open my presentation about presenting integrative medicine and integrative oncology as something that is in the middle as a mediator of medicine and we all grew uh, between these two ancient kingdoms of medicine in Egypt and Mesopotamia, that's the birth of medicine worldwide and the creation on, of the monotheistic religions and the medicine that is associated with them. It is the place where uh, Greek medicine had uh, f flourished from Hippocrates meeting Wang Di, the, the yellow emperor in China, and uh, Charka and Shushota, the, the, the ancient leaders of Ayurvedic medicine in India. And through this Islamic and the Arab impulse between the East and Europe, between East and West, North and South, that's the place where we can meet our patients today. And meeting our patients is about experiencing cross-cultural barriers and opportunities and how to meet their, the patient's health belief models, how to be more patient-centered, how to tailor our treatment accordingly, and how to shift the paradigm from a dichotomy 
of conventional alternative, and I would also say conventional and complementary medicine to integration, because integrative medicine is not really a complementary medicine, as you would see. The Society for Integrative Oncology, or the SIO, was founded in 2003. We have 600 members from about, about 51 countries, and uh, much of the activities is uh, in North America, but also in, in Asia and uh, in the Middle East, and of course in, in Europe, especially in the UK, in Germany, in Switzerland, in Italy, in Scandinavia, and other countries. The definition of integrative oncology, according to the SIO, highlights these keywords, evidence-based, evidence-informed, it's about relating to traditions, to the traditional medicine, and alongside conventional cancer care. And it means that we provide integrative care within, within the oncology centers and not parallel to that. It is also about, about providing care across the cancer care continuum, about empowering patients and about becoming a, a more active uh, participants before, during, and beyond the cancer treatment. And the highlight of this activity is with evidence-based medicine, is with guidelines, and this is the mo one of the most important guidelines, together with the American Society of Clinical Oncology, with ASCO. It was published in 2018 about integrative therapies during and after breast cancer treatment. And the last one, the last guideline, from last year uh, was created, co-designed together with ASCO, SIO together with ASCO, and it's about integrative medicine for pain management and oncology. And more and more guidelines are on the pi pipeline with cancer-related fatigue, with insomnia, with, uh, with emotional stress, and so on. So this is the SIO executive committee. Our uh, present president is Linda Carlson. And we have a very uh, uh, high activity with what we call the ambassador or international program. I'm the, I'm the, the SIO uh, ambassador to Europe and the Middle East, and we have ambassadors to the UK and Australia and Brazil, and more and more ambassadors would be appointed uh, in the next years. Going back to where I'm coming from, from Haifa, from Northern Israel, we have established our Integrative Oncology um, Unit or program in Haifa in 2018. And it means that we provide free of charge treatment to patients in our center. It's a public center. It's affiliated with the Technion Faculty of Medicine. And it uh, con in includes three sectors, important sectors who provide the treatment daily. It's integrative physicians, dual practitioners, nurses, psycho-oncologists, dietitians, uh, and so on. And integrative oncology practitioners all trained specifically in the field of integrative oncology. So if this patient, Salma, a real patient, comes to our clinic with advanced breast cancer and, and has a significant side effects, uh, the nurse oncologist, someone from the team, the oncologist, nurse, or psycho-oncologist would be the ones that would refer her to our integrative oncology consultation provided free of charge within the oncology service area, within the department, and this would be coordinated, the treatment would be coordinated with all the, the patients, healthcare providers, the oncologist, the surgeon, the psycho-oncologist, the family practitioners, and so on. And the treatment would be, uh, would include the bio, psycho, social, spiritual elements, the patient's narrative and her concerns leading eventually based on evidence, on research about efficacy and safety to the highlight, which is an integrative oncology patient tailored treatment. So when, when you look at the literature, about the efficacy, the effectiveness of, of this patient-tailored treatment uh, with patients with, with a highly, uh, uh, that receive treatment every week 
compared to other patients, you can see that it is about uh, alleviating anxiety and depression. It's about insomnia treatment. It's about pain and fatigue. And you can see here the data from, from the, the leading German uh, journals in oncology, the Journal of Cancer Research and Clinical Oncology, the data with patients receiving integrative care, it could be acupuncture, manual movement therapies, herbal medicine, mind, body, and anthroposophic medicine, alleviation of pain in localized disease and advanced disease. And finally, you can see that the, the efficacy is, is, is also can, can be established in randomized controlled trials, like the one we have published in Cancer about the impact of acupuncture alleviating chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy. So it's not only limited, limited to, to uh, quality of life improvement, it has on, all, also ramifications about the adherence to the chemotherapy protocol, and we have shown that specific chemotherapy protocols can be benefited. The adherence of patients to the chemotherapy protocol is higher when these patients receive an integrative continuity of care. And you can also see that in specific groups like patients with gynecological oncology malignancies, mainly ovarian and endometrial cancer, this continuity of integrative care is also associated with survival. This is Kaplan-Meier survival curves, and it also has economic impact, here in this case, less uh, 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 emergency room visits in this, in this group receiving optimal integrative treatment. It's not easy to do a, an integrative process, to implement that in the heart of conventional medicine or oncology. In order to do that, for example, in this, in this setting, in this setting of a gynecological oncology surgery, when you want to, to do intraoperative acupuncture, for example, in the middle, along, the, the, along the, the operation, it needs collaboration, it needs communication with the uh, surgeons, with the anesthesiologists, with the oncologists, with the nurses, with uh, everyone on board, with the palliative care therapists and so on. But it is feasible, and this is Adam, from... Sorry, may I ask you to come to a conclusion, please? Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. So it, it, is, it is feasible, and it has, it, it has also an impact on, on objective parameters uh, along, the, the, along the treatment. The, this is also important in terms of, of reframing patients' expectations, and, and these, these are important in the context of cross-cultural medicine. And you can see here an article about safety concerns and how integrative medicine can, uh, can bring together these concepts. We did it also in Europe with the refugee crisis, with uh, meetings in Berlin published in this literature. And medical education is the way to eventually collaborate. And you can see here an IVAA supported meeting in 2019 with these countries involved and everyone here are conducting collaborative research. So in conclusion, in order to induce integration, it's about bringing in the integrative practitioner, physician, nurse into the conventional team in a medical education process that would lead to a better treatment of our patients. So this is where I'm coming from. And this is maybe where we can go to, to this path of integration. And I thank you for your listening. Thank you very much for this very inspiring presentation. I am very pleased to introduce the next speaker, also online, uh, Dr. Massimo Bonucci founder and president of ARTOI, Associazione Ricerca Terapie Oncologiche Integrate. Dr. Bonucci is a medical doctor, member of the Surgical Pathology Orchidea Lab in Rome. He's a member of the International Academy of Pathology Italian Division, uh, and he focuses his work on breast cancer, 
brain cancer and colon cancer. He introduced and developed integrative medicine in Italy, and he works um, in the Villa Benedetta Tiberia Hospital, Villa Anna Maria Hospitals in Rome. He's a director to project integrative oncology at the Sant'Andrea University Hospital in Rome. Um, he's director and professor of the Univer Unir Salus University Consortium in Rome for the Master in Integrative Oncology and Postgraduate Program. He's co-director of Master in Integrative Oncology at Sapienza University. He's a member of the International Exchange Commission Order of Physicians in Rome. And he's a visiting professor in Zhejiang Chinese Medical U University in Hongzhou in China. He's a member of this uh, SIO for many years and he's also co-chair of the SIO Global Task Force. Please, Massimo Bonucci, the floor is yours. Yeah, <clears throat> good morning. Good morning, uh, everyone. I would like to thank uh, the, the, um, for inviting me uh, to speak about the integrative oncology. Um, I am, uh, I'll come. Okay, uh, I am a president of Artoi. What is Artoi? Artoi is one of the uh, the uh, the organization in Italy. Uh, I have no. Okay, I have no. Sorry. Okay, but uh, I have you. Um, or you change my my. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Give me the, the possibility to, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, sorry. And um, Wartoi is uh, one of the, the best, uh, the, 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 the association that to work about uh, the uh, integrative oncology. I have no, sorry, but I have no possibility to go uh, away with my, with my slide. Sorry. Um, because I think uh, we are managing your slides from here, so you can just say next slides when you when we need to change the slides. Uh, because I have no possibility to, to go away uh, for me, for me directly, may away, because I have no possibility to change. Uh... Do you want to share the slides yourself? Yeah, yourself? for me, okay. directly, if you want. I'm sorry. You can share your slides now. Yeah, also. now I have my share here. And uh, now I, you see my, my, my screen? No. No? Why? You have no my screen. Would it be okay for you if we share your slides? Because then everybody in the room could also see them. Yeah, do you see my, my screen now or not? No, we don't see your screen. But we can show them for you. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. You see my screen or not? Uh, sorry. No. no, we can't. But in order to to make the process faster, maybe I suggest that we uh, we share your slides from here, and you just guide us through your slides, and we you tell us when we have to switch to the next one. Okay, uh, next one, next one, next one. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sorry, because now I. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. Okay. Yeah, now here. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, next, next, uh, next, uh, next, uh, <laughs> next. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then, okay. Next, next, encore. Next. 
and next, uh, the Artoi is a uh, why Artoi is integrative oncology in Italy is uh, is uh, an association to promote uh, the research in integrative oncology uh, on of level care in the research training and prevention. Next, we do the university course uh, in uh, in a big university, and the next uh, we have the uh, um, the the. The association abroad, the knowledge about abroad, the, 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 the Italy. Next, and uh, we we'll, uh, like to, to to have the definition about integrative oncology. The combined the combined use of anti-cancer treatment like chemotherapy surgery, and but with in with uh, many other methodology like um, uh, traditional Chinese medicine, agopuncture, uh, anthroposophic therapy and hyperthermia too. And, but we would like to understand that the, the education, the risk uh, with the alternative medicine, because the alternative medicine alone, it doesn't work. Next. And uh, this is some, uh, an opinion about uh, the, the different point from uh, um, Western medicine that, uh, that, uh, and Oriental medicine. They say they eliminated uh, the cases and the other side, the holistic approach about the, 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 the patient. The next one. And, uh, and I would like to also to, 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 to want to bring you some data about uh, about uh, in uh, in integrative in Italy they are not uh, available throughout the Italy but is present in such region like uh, Tuscany and Emilia Romagna is in the public and also in some hospital in uh, in Italy in Merano in Rome in uh, in Turin but uh, we are also the the private clinic that it could be possible to have uh, uh, a lot of uh, integrative treatment like uh, herbal medicine on the hyperthermia in, in many, many cases. Next one. And uh, uh, this is uh, a, a survey where, where the most uh, that uh, they use in uh, the, the integrative treatment in Italy, this is a cancer, uh, the, the type of cancer, next one. And this is uh, the, 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 the possibility to have a natural product and mind body practices next one and they use they use also not before but and after but also during chemotherapy too the next one and uh, this is the first beneficial, the, the, the use of uh, uh, integrative treatment uh, for the cash and passion. next one and this is a uh, 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 next one is too and this, this is the, the, the oncologist, uh, next one, uh, the oncologist, they say only a, a, a little part of the source of uh, information about the integrative treatment. And I know, I, and I would like to understand that I know that the work in the herbal medicine, the efficacy, next one, and also, also homeopathy work, uh, and this is uh, the, 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 good, uh, the, the good results. Next, and why we the, the, we define some uh, um, recommendation about uh, each type of uh, uh, methodology to help the patient. Next one. This is a, a publication about natural substance in research. Next, 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 next. Melissa Rafamir and Pharmacobiota, Epigenetics, next one. Uh, and also the approach of integrative hematology to the next one. And this is the uh, last one, uh, next one, last one uh, work about uh, the radio, about the, the integrative ontology tool. Next one. And this is our uh, publication about the clinical research in integrative oncology. This is a nutrition, next one. This is a for, uh, next one for use of creams in radiotherapy, next one. And uh, uh, this is a, a case report about uh, integrative treatment of the metastatic breast cancer is disappeared uh, completely. Next one. This one, the use of uh, natural product for fatigue. Next one. This is for the use of uh, touch therapy. Uh, next one. And also with the, with the Tai Chi is used about, uh, about the, the help, the, the, the cancer patient. Next one.
Uh, this is for mucositis uh, with with the with the patient doing chemotherapy with uh, with uh, natural substances. Next one. Last one is one of the the the, 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 the case of study study. The current role now. Uh, you, next one. We studied a research about the combined use of natural substances in a combination with chemotherapy, chemotherapeutic agency with the two major Italian institutions. We take a randomized double bind multicenter clinical trial uh, with natural substances in combination with the chemotherapy with the uh, brain tumor, glioblastoma, clinical trial for agopuncture and sleep disorder. And the last one, Last one is a clinical research on macrobiota in breast pathology and the evaluation of the diet according to, to Artoi to change the breast pathology and the macrobiota in breast pathology. Next one. Uh, what is our work now to um, to take to to create a bridge about about the medical oncology and integrative oncology to 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 find the right way for our patient? The next one how. We uh, organize a workshop on meeting the specific topic and uh, compare, discuss the results obtained with integrative oncology. Uh, next one, uh, the conclusion is, uh, I think it's, uh, 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 I think it's uh, integrative therapy is uh, one of the best treatment for our patient before, during, and after therapy, because this is a, a, a very help for the patient. Next one. This is a group of toy when we work uh, uh, for the project. Next, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Venucci, for your first forward presentation. <laughs> so <laughs> I would um, <laughs> like to continue with um, Dr. Um, Hussein Sahinbas. He's the chairman of the German Society um, for Hyperthermia. So he's here in person. So thank you so much for being here. Um, Dr. Sahinbas, he's a dedicated physician um, specializing in radiology, um, radiotherapy, and palliative medicine. Um, with his motto, constantly seeking um, the most successful approaches for his patients. So um, he combines his extensive experience um, with his passion in providing the best possible care. So throughout his career, uh, he had worked in various um, medical fields, including radiology, oncology, and also intensive care medicine. Um, so Dr. Sahin, but he has different um, holds different leading leadership positions, and he's also, con yeah, his contributions to the advancements of herpetherma treatment have been already of a significant impact for patients' care. So thank you so much for being here. So the floor is yours. Thank you for your invitation. So uh, I have seven minutes time. Uh, Audwin shows a few slides about uh, hyperthermia devices. Or options. Um, the, can I show you a, a signal then to say next one? So uh, please, the next one. The um, hyperthermia, it means uh, bring heat energy in total body or lo localized uh, regions is very old. And in Germany, it's existing more than 40 years. The German Hyperthermia Society was founded in 1996. Um, 2004, we had an international um, consensus meeting in Japan and um, tried to find a definition for hyperthermia. Hyperthermia is like uh, chemotherapy. We have different options. Everybody's talking about uh, the oncological treatment or uh, chemo drugs, but nobody knows what this, uh, this means. Uh, more or less, it's the um, same problem with the uh, hyperthermia. We have more than 22, 24 different forms of hyperthermia. And in this consensus meeting, we tried uh, to make a protocol uh, which is uh, available for around the world. We have German hyperthermia societies. We have European hyperthermia societies. I was several times in Italy, in Israel, uh, uh, in uh, USA, and we have international <clears throat> worldwide hyperthermia 
congresses so that each of us is talking about the same things. Uh, so um, we definite that we uh, can help the body to develop again favor. Favor is natural phenomenon. It's developed uh, during the past million years as uh, to, to fight against different diseases. So we can help the body to develop again normal uh, reaction with high highly temperature so we can help the body with some drugs for example mistletoe with the injection of mistletoe we can help the body that he can produce his own uh, temperature to uh, increase the efficacy of the immune system uh, the chronic disease patient of course including cancer patient are not able um, to show a normal reaction after, for example, infection. And in this case, we are using medical devices. So we can say um, we have uh, the options to treat the total body, or in case of cancer, the region of interest. It can be brain, it can be uh, any other organs. Um, um, the total body hyperthermia is also in different forms available, like um, um, normal fever between 38 and 40 centigrades, or in case of uh, advanced cancer situation, it can be increased up to 42 centigrades, uh, like in the intensive care unit. But normally, 90% of the treatments can be done without any additional uh, supportive uh, care. So like if we have um, fever in cold disease. In um, case of uh, localized problems like uh, uh, brain tumors, or pancreatic cancer, what he told us, liver metastasis, colon metastasis, we have options to um, heat up this region. So, uh, and there's also five, six different options. How, do, how does it can be done? Click the next one. And uh, the, um, like in uh, classical oncology, we are combining different uh, drugs uh, in past five or eight years, classical chemo drugs with new drugs, with antibodies, with immunodrugs, with radiation therapy. And so the similarity can be done in hyperthermia. Uh, it means we can make a combination with active hyperthermia. It means I can inject um, uh, the patient one drug to uh, start the immune reaction with developing temperature. I can uh, heat the patient in a medical device in total body and afterwards um, uh, in, in region of interest, we can focus the heat on the cancer. So this is our different uh, options of hyperthermia. We have uh, more than 46,000 publications. If you um, ask in PubMed or some similarities, you will find more than 45, 50,000 publications about hyperthermia and more than 20,000 hyperthermia with cancer. So we have enough sciences, enough publications, enough knowledge, but we have problem to bring it to the uh, first line treatments. Um, we know how does it work. We know how does, um, how the chemo drugs uh, can be get more effective under temperature. We know how the radiation therapy can get more efficacy with hyperthermia. Um, please, the next one. We know with the combination with the new um, immunodrugs, um, this uh, um, slide shows the uh, uh, efficacy of the uh, radiation and uh, local hyperthermia. It means 
we are we have the same result with the hyperthermia by using the 50 percentage of the radiation dosage or it means we can double the efficacy i'm sorry we can double the efficacy of uh, the radiation uh, if we can do it as a combination, these are few uh, studies which shows definitely the benefit from the uh, combination of radiotherapy. The next one, please. Uh, the, similarly with the um, uh, chemo drugs, we have a lot of randomized phase three studies in combination with hyperthermia, uh, in combination with chemo and hyperthermia, or in combination radiation and uh, hyperthermia. So uh, the next one, um, the hyperthermia is not an alternative medicine. And I believe I'm on the way since 1998 with hyperthermia and I'm really a radiation oncologist. So I know the guidelines in classical medical oncology with uh, hardcore medicine, radiation and chemo, chemo and radiation. But I see in some cases we have not so good success in the past 30 years, didn't change anything, like in brain tumors, like in pancreas cancer. We have very good results with the immunodrugs in some cases in systemic cancer entities like leukemia, lymphoma, uh, kidney cancer, skin cancer with the new immunodrugs. But in some cases, we have no chance. N nothing changed in the past 30, 40 years. The advantage of uh, the hyperthermia can um, help to have much more success. So it should be and it can be integrated directly from the beginning in uh, some cases where we have enough randomized phase three studies directly, not on the end of the disease and not only as standing alone. Uh, so this is an um, example how it can be combined in the same time. It is a very intensive time for the patient, but very important time. It helps to survive the cancer disease. Please, the next one. Um, of course, favor, I will, 60 seconds, can be used, uh, hyperthermia can be used in other chronic disease. This is a randomized phase three study on depression. So it can be used in, in a pain patient, in palliative care. The next one, please. So summarize is, it is a natural reaction. We have the medical technical devices, it's easy to handle, it has nearly no real side effects. We are teaching medical staff, nurses and doctors. We, have, uh, um, we are teaching in um, German Hyperthermia Society and certificating our colleagues that they are, can start uh, with a high level of knowledge with a hyperthermia. But we have a problem nobody of the politicians or from the insurance knows about it. And we have no idea how we can go uh, and have more success and make it public. I believe, I believe the hyperthermia needs uh, uh, his own department for hyperthermia included in a university, maybe here in Brussels, maybe in Germany, wherever, uh, we have to have an address for the politicians, for the uh, insurance, for the patients. And we can collect all the data and can help our colleagues and patients. What is the best way? Thank you so much. Thank you very Thank much, you. Dr. Saimbas. Um, I'm pleased now to give the floor to Professor Mick Young head of NAFCAM, the Norway's National Research Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Um, she's also a professor in health services research at the Arctic University of Norway and a lecturer in the public health at Mid Sweden University, Sandwall in Sweden. She got her master's degree in medical biology in 1993 in the Netherlands, 
where she also got her PhD in medicine in 1997, after she m moved to Sweden uh, and to Norway in 2020. Um, she, her particular interests include supportive care in cancer with specific focus on wilderness therapy, in addition to other CAM modalities and self-help techniques. Thank you very much. Mrs. Young, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Good morning uh, to you all. Uh, just uh, shortly state that I have no uh, conflicts related to this uh, presentation. So I am the director of uh, NAFCAM, Norway's National Research Center in Complementary and Alternative Medicine. And we are the only national research center on CAM in Europe. So that means we are financed by uh, the Norwegian Directorate of Health, so by the Ministry of Health. And our uh, center has three assignments. So the first one is that we have to perform research on complementary and alternative medicine, uh, that we have to provide quality assured information uh, on the potential effectiveness and also safety or risks of complementary and alternative medicine. And then our third assignment is that we also have to monitor safety. So if we encounter any possible risks, safety risks with respect to use of complementary medicine, we have to report that to the Norwegian health authorities. So just a brief overview, it has already been said, but uh, uh, about a quarter of the general population in Europe uses some form of complementary of alternative uh, treatment. Uh, most used are massage, homeopathy, osteopathy, herbs and acupuncture. But if we look in specific patient populations, so those that have a chronic disease or also cancer survivors, the percentage is much higher. It's about half of all patients are using some a form of a CAM. Uh, what is a major challenge in Europe is that uh, uh, most uh, patients do not communicate to their healthcare professional that they are using some form of complementary medicine. Only one third does discuss this, and this poses a problem, because I want to stress here, uh, not everything is safe, and some uh, kind of modalities can have interactions with cancer treatment. So it is of incredibly importance mm -hmm. that patients and also healthcare professionals that they uh, discuss about it, that they disclose their use. Uh, unfortunately, uh, up to date, there is little to no central regulation on the EU level, EU level in Europe when it comes to CAM, uh, uh, this harmonized regulation. And we stress also as a national center that it's highly needed that we have tools uh, that uh, assist in the communication and that exist in a, that assist in healthcare in order to support patients to make good decisions on safety and efficacy. And uh, such tools uh, need to provide high quality information. And I just want to uh, point uh, out to you that we have developed a tool. Uh, very interesting is that it was uh, uh, originally in 2012 an EU project. So with EU funding, we have been able to develop a, a, a CAM cancer database. And we as NAFCAM have taken on the lead to uh, uh, make sure that this is updated and that it is available for free for everyone in Europe and beyond. And the aim of this CAM cancer base is that to bring together leading experts in CAM and cancer care, so the CAM cancer collaboration, but also to provide evidence-based information in this database. The website is camcancer.org. So what is this database? It is open access. It is a non-profit for healthcare professionals. We have uh, summaries of 70 different uh, uh, CAM modalities, treatment-based summaries, and they always follow a standardized a template. What is it? Does it work? Is it safe? And then the evidence. And I just want to make sure that this is high quality evidence. So it is rigorous methodology. It is all peer reviewed. It follows uh, high quality standards. We do have certification. So it meets all criteria uh, uh, for a high quality evidence uh, uh, database. 
it is used in different countries worldwide. Mostly our focus, of course, is the Nordic countries with Norway and Sweden, but it's also widely used in Germany, in Switzerland, and uh, uh, also in the US. And uh, the National Cancer Institute in the United States, they evaluated 11 online databases er and our CAM Cancer database was ranked second. And they said that website developers can use CAM Cancer as a model for trustworthy information. Because I have to stress, uh, 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 we also have the responsibility not only about complementary medicine, because also about alternative medicine, because there's still a lot of unproven treatments out there, specifically also in cancer. And uh, uh, we do not uh, want patients to have false hope. I think hope is always good, but they should not get false promises. So therefore, I want to stress out the importance of evidence-based medicine. Here are some, uh, in the, our database, you find some uh, uh, therapies where there is evidence. But again, I have to stress, uh, most evidence is of moderate quality and uh, effects are of short to medium term effects. So we still have some challenges when it comes to uh, improvement of our, our quality specifically. I want to end by saying that we think that CAM cancer is an important uh, tool, uh, an important pathway to impact for patients, healthcare professionals. And uh, uh, we really see that we need to collaborate as much as possible uh, with other organizations in order to make this information available. Just want to uh, end saying that uh, this information is used in Oncopedia, uh, the portal of the DGO in Germany, uh, uh, also in other German speaking uh, European countries, in Norway, of course, and we have uh, uh, different contexts uh, uh, that they are using our information in uh, Denmark, in Sweden, and also in Belgium. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Young. Um, also on um, putting the emphasis on the importance of the high standards um, of education, which is necessary um, for practicing um, integrative oncology. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm very pleased now to introduce to you Dr. Elio Rossi. I don't think he needs um, a lot of um, introduction, but um, so he's the member of the coordination office of the regional center for integrative medicine in Tuscany. So throughout his career, um, he has served as a president of the scientific board of the International Congress of Liga Medicorum Homeopathica Internationalis. Um, so he's been involved in teaching and lecturing on complementary medicine and particularly in the field of oncology. Um, so he's been actively engaged in international cooperation programs and advising also on complementary medicine projects. Um, so he's been participating in a lot of conferences and also co-chairing the um, Second World Congress on Integrative Medicine and Health in 2000, um, in this year actually. So um, he has contributed in various publications, including box, uh, books and <laughs> complementary medicine on can uh, cancer patients and integrative of oncology. Um, so his expertise spans a wide range of topics related to integrative medicine, and he has made significant contributions to the field through his research, advocacy, and professional activities. So I will give the floor to Dr. Rossi. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know if uh, you can put my presentation or I have to. As you prefer, we can put it online, but, or, but, but then it means that you will have to ask us to. No, you can put, uh, it's better okay. for me probably, yes. Just to yeah, avoid the problems we have in general from Italy, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> But if you have, if you want, I try by myself. Yeah, but maybe you, you can in the, in, yeah, maybe you can start presenting on your own, your presentation. Yeah, yes, that's great. I put it in PDF because I, I probably is, uh, is better because uh, sometimes it doesn't work. But in any case, thanks uh, for the invitation. And uh, 
this is uh, the situation in uh, Tuscany. As you know, we have uh, started uh, since many years uh, a process of integration complementary medicine. These are uh, complementary medicine clinics uh, uh, in uh, public health. They are were in 2021 uh, 77. Now they are uh, 84. Uh, these are uh, the main steps uh, of the uh, process of integration of complementary medicine in the oncology network of the region. Uh, we will see in the main step uh, later on. And uh, this, is, uh, um, this work is due to the great collaboration of the Tuscan uh, Tumor Institute, now is uh, ISPRO, uh, the Institute for Study, Prevention and Oncological Network. You can see in the ISPRO website, uh, there is also the presence uh, of uh, in uh, complementary integrative medicine in oncology. Uh, the uh, international activity we did uh, since a uh, few years ago, uh, started a few years ago, is uh, participating to the EPAC. It was uh, the uh, Joint Action European Partnership for Action Against Cancer. Uh, we had uh, do two goals. One was uh, to uh, make uh, a study about the evidence in uh, uh, literature about uh, integrative medicine and uh, cancer and then to map uh, mapping the uh, institute uh, with the integrative oncology uh, in Europe. This is a book that resumes our work on literature. And this is uh, the organizer uh, and the lead of, uh, of the um, joint A action APAC. These are uh, the result of our study. And uh, the, uh, you see, can see that uh, we um, send a questionnaire to more than 200 uh, centers in Europe, and uh, we uh, find that about 20% uh, of them providing uh, integrative oncology service. These are the therapy most uh, used uh, in the centers. You see there is uh, agopuncture, uh, homeopathy, herbal medicine, and anthroposophy, but um, the main uh, practice were uh, what we call the mind and body, mindfulness, uh, etc., so-called biodiscipline in, in Italy. This is the participation to the Quality Insurance Scheme Development Group uh, promoted by the European Commission Initiative on Breast Cancer and uh, managed by JRC uh, in, uh, in Italy. And uh, this is the manual in which is stated that breast cancer service must have a written policy to ask patients about and to discuss the use of entry integrative medicine. And, um, and this uh, is the memorandum of understanding we sign as Tuscany region uh, for uh, an international collaboration of, uh, for integrative medicine with uh, the uh, Memory Sloan Catering uh, Center, Cancer Center of uh, New York. And the goal are a research project and a collaboration for research project, uh, training and uh, education. Uh, one of the first uh, collaboration uh, was uh, to um, uh, design a study uh, which uh, were founded uh, in 2018, and then they stopped for pandemic uh, block, uh, but uh, we um, founded as a region, uh, Tuscany region, three projects. Uh, the first is about the Chemochim project, about uh, chemo brain, I mean, uh, uh, chemo, uh, I mean, uh, the impairment, cognitive impairment uh, due to, uh, generally due to uh, anti-cancer treatment uh, and uh, to use uh, agopunch, homeopathy and uh, rehabilitation, cognitive rehabilitation exercise. The other two about uh, cannabis indica for uh, aromatase related articular pain and the efficacy of agopuncture in radiotherapy related fatigue. They are in course of uh, um, working. Uh, then uh, the uh, last uh, important uh, um, achievements uh, is uh, the uh, publication of a PDTA, which means uh, uh, Diagnostic Therapeutic and Care Pathways, uh, a sort of uh, guidelines uh, about uh, breast cancer, including uh, com in complementary medicine. And the second is Integrative Medicine Oncology. This is the image of the uh, PDTA, uh, regional PDTA. And uh, some example of what uh, is included, uh, the uh, possibility to have uh, a visit uh, without paying a visit of uh, integrative oncology, participating to the multidisciplinary oncology group, and uh, to have also access to radiotherapy center. Just a few examples. 
this is the last one, integrated medicine for cancer patient, and this is the image. In yellow, you see the oncologist who participate to the group of work on this. This is the content of the guideline of the PDTA, and is just an example of radiotherapy. You see the table in which there is the role of agopuncture, phytotherapy, and homeopathy to prevent uh, radiodermitis and other, other adverse effects of radiotherapy. This is a table, a general table, in which uh, is connected, uh, every symptom is connected uh, with uh, a possibility of uh, treatment. Uh, and uh, the, uh, well, few words about the mode of operation of the uh, integrative oncology of patient clinic. Uh, in almost all cases, patients are referred by their oncology departments. They, but they can also have a direct access, uh, asking just asking for a, an appointment. The complementary medicine visit, uh, as well as agopuncture treatment and any other healthcare service for cancer patients, is free of charge. There is an exemption 48. And uh, uh, of course, we have also some in different uh, places uh, clinical service about uh, more than agopuncture, urban medicine, homeopathy, which are diet dietary advice, support for physical activity, including Tai Chi, Qi Kong, art and music therapy, and so on. This is the list of the 20, about 20 clinics, public clinics, in which uh, integrative oncology is uh, provided. Uh, public means with uh, the hospital as uh, this uh, kind of complementary medicine service, but uh, within the group of uh, complementary medicines, there, in, there are some more specialistic uh, integrative oncology. This is the number of patients and the number of visit or treatment made in 2021. We visit about uh, 2,300 patients and uh, with uh, um, 11,000 and uh, more than 11,600 visit or uh, treatment for uh, every year. We have uh, just uh, concluded the survey of, uh, of uh, the 2022 uh, year, and uh, we have uh, more or less the same result. And uh, finally, this is showcase is a publication, is a showcase of a good uh, cancer practice presented to the Commission, the European Commission, the European Parliament about Euriga, which is a network of uh, European regions in which uh, they present uh, their innovation in 2021. And uh, uh, you see that uh, Tuscany, uh, you can um, show the, uh, as an innovation uh, in that year, the uh, policy of integration of a complementary medicine in integrative oncology. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Dr. Rossi, for presenting the achievements in Tuscany and how we can practically um, integrate com complementary and conventional uh, medicine into in the national health system. Now from Tuscany, we pass to Baden-Württemberg. Um, Dr. Thomas Breikreuz, spokesperson from the Competence Network on Integrative Medicine in Baden-Württemberg, is, uh, is presenting them the integration model in this region. Yes, hello. Thank you for the invitation. I just start uh, to speak about a collaboration of hospitals who do integrative oncology included mostly into cancer centers. It's the KIM, the Competence Network of Integrative Medicine Baden-Württemberg. And I'm very happy that Minister Lucha, who gave the video message at the beginning of uh, this session, uh, he is our, uh, yeah, he really protects uh, this. Um, um, he is our doing the patronage for us. And uh, so um, the network, the competence network was founded uh, in late 2017. At that time, the patronage was the state secretary to Minister Lucha. And we started with 10 hospitals on different levels, university hospitals, um, regional hospitals, um, a, a mix of cancer centers and uh, uh, other hospitals with a long-standing expertise in integrative medicine. Um, and um, that is, that were the logos of the hospitals that started to collaborate there. 
uh, you can see that uh, those hospitals sometimes are very, very big uh, oncologic hospitals. Uh, and it was amazing, an amazing journey to collaborate now over, over six years uh, with other hospitals coming in and working on recommendations for integrative oncology treatments that are fully included into cancer care in Southwest Germany. So these are the complementary therapies that are um, provided uh, within our hospital. So you can see it's different traditions uh, that can all be of help for cancer patients. And of course, the question here is how to integrate the integrative therapy. So how to define best practices. Uh, so not saying uh, who, is, who is always right or who is better than the other, but really to collect uh, concerning certain symptoms, concerning oncologic situations, who has something to offer uh, and what has best effects and what is easy to implement. And of course, how can we thus help to create sustainable models for institutional implementation on a larger scale? So as Minister Lucha said, our goal actually is that uh, we want to, want to provide uh, integrative trainings, uh, knowledge, skills uh, for integrative treatments uh, for patients that can be offered in every hospital um, uh, treating oncologic patients. It was very important with uh, the university hospitals and, and the cancer centers, first to agree what do we define as integrative medicine. And we, 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 we did an operational, so to say, um, definition for us, it really means integrative medicine is integrated into specialized hospital units. It's a meaningful combination of conventional and complementary methods. So really looking what does the patient need? That's the criterion. It follows the patient needs and symptoms and is delivered in a patient-centered approach in interdisciplinary teams and always led by medical doctors with a double competence. So they are trained, for example, in internal medicine or oncology, and they are trained in at least one tradition of complementary medicine. And we work on a scientific basis with all three pillars of uh, evidence-based medicine. So not just external evidence with studies, but internal evidence and patient values that are included as well. So if you look at this, you can see there are much more hospitals now. One can say these are many, many hospitals with the top, the top range of Baden-Württemberg hospitals. So we had a significant growth over the last six years. Nowadays, we have 19 hospitals and outpatient centers in Southwest Germany, two academic research centers. Uh, the minister himself does the patronage now. We are very grateful for that. If you look at the structure of the hospital, you have university hospitals, teaching hospitals, general hospitals. If you look at the structure of the cancer care provided in the hospitals, you can see there are two CCCs, so-called comprehensive cancer centers. This is the highest level in Germany. There are only 12 hospitals in all Germany. Two of them are in Baden-Württemberg and they are members. We have 12 cancer centers and three specialized hospitals for integrative oncology. And we complement with a uh, collaborate with a research group and received a substantial funding from the Baden-Württemberg government. The new, the latest hospital coming in is uh, the Stuttgart Cancer Centers. Three big hospitals. Just last week, uh, they decided to join the Kim, and that shows how, somehow where we are standing now. So there are 14 organ centers, more than 11,000 cancer patients per year. Um, all tumor boards now um, can provide integrative treatment recommendation and there is a specialized integrative tumor board for specific integrative treatment recommendations within the Stuttgart Cancer Centers. And you can see the colleague, Julia Gottfried, who is leading uh, uh, this center now, the integrative center within the SCC, the Stuttgart Cancer Center. The structure of our network is um, not too complicated. We have a steering group. We have the members. Members are hospitals. So it, the members are not just, let's say, integrative practitioners or working groups, but uh, to be a member of the KIM, the, the directors of the hospital, they have to apply that their hospital can be a member. Then we have the, the working groups in green, the medical, the doctors group, the nurses groups, 
uh, for oncology, we have an infectiology working group. Uh, they all work on best practice uh, recommendations. We have a methodology team with the research units, and we have an expert pool for training, for counseling, for, for counseling, for job shadowing. That's very important, and there it's important to be near to each other, uh, to learn from each other. The identification and promotion of best practices always starts with a symptom-oriented approach. So we do not give, let's say, just for breast cancer stage three um, uh, a recommendation, but the recommendations follow the symptoms. For example, cancer fatigue or uh, chemotherapy-induced polyneuropathy or loss of appetite, loss of weight. Yeah? So we focus on symptoms for different cancers. And then when we identify the best practices from different traditions, we look for effectiveness, we look for training needs. Why? Because we want to provide something that is easy to implement. Our goal is not basic research, but promoting implementation in new hospitals. And that's why we look at costs and time as well, and we look at feasibility. So do you need uh, uh, special rooms, uh, special methodologies? Um, and we always, of course, we combine our internal recommendations with external evidence and the assessment of side effects and interaction. Um, you all know the pyramid of external evidence, the pyramid that you can see on the left-hand side. Of course, when we deal with experiences in hospitals, even if they are large-scale uh, teaching hospitals, university hospitals, internal evidence can have different levels as well. And so a single experience of one doctor or one person, that's very weak. If you collect experiences of teams in hospitals, large units, if you then go to multi-central team expertise, then you use standardized criteria. We did an interactive DELF process to identify best practices and had an interdisciplinary assessment. So we are confident that the treatment recommendations based mostly on internal evidence and then after that combining with external evidence uh, that we have a that we can reach a high standard of internal evidence as well. So experience is not something weak. Experience is something very meaningful. Um, that's in German. Sorry for that. So now we have all these practice Dr. recommendations. Dr. Breitkopf, may I ask you to come to a conclusion, please? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So what we do is that in the end, we, we provide starter kits yeah, for new hospitals. Uh, it's a pleasure to do so. And uh, uh, just last week, uh, the Kim um, became a new status now. We ha have now the status of a working group within the Collaboration for Translational Oncology in Baden-Württemberg. That's the official structure of the Cancer Association here. So we can say that for our journey over six years now, uh, we had a very, very interesting uh, process, full, process full of learnings uh, for us how to uh, work for full integration into cancer centers. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for, for your great contribution. It's really good to see all these best practices all around Europe. Um, what I would um, also like to mention is that um, also outside of Europe, we see that, for instance, in the Memorial Sloan Kentrick um, Cancer Center, the Anderson Cancer Center, the Dana Faber Cancer Institute, and also within Europe, the UK, um, the William um, Marston um, NHS Center, we see like also this um, full integration of different camps and acupuncture also. Um, so thank you all so much for all your um, valuable contributions um, to this discussion. Um, so what we've seen is that we really have to go towards this synergy uh, of the conventional medicine and all the different care modalities. So um, actually we were already granted some extra minutes so uh, we don't have time for an actual um, Q&A, but I think um, the concluding remarks can be um, given to Dr. Antonella um, Polazzi. Um, she has been working since 2011 for the Tuscany uh, Region EU Liaison uh, Office in Brussels in charge of the health policies. So she contributed to the creation um, in 2017 of the Tuscany Region European and International Health Affairs Network um, and coordinated by the health um, direction. Um, 
this direction get as actually representatives of a regional um, health ecosystem consisting of governmental institutions, but also um, hospitals and research centers um, and life science enterprises. So um, now for this morning to conclude, she will give her contribution on behalf of the Tuscany um, Regional Health Ministry. Thank you so much. Hello, thank you. Um, so I will try to be very <laughs> Uh, very short in my... Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, for this invitation. Uh, our ministry was uh, um, appreciated this invitation. Thank you to Eurocam, thank you to Mrs. Ripa and uh, for the intergroup that and uh, we hope to continue to cooperate. As you know, our uh, I, I don't want to repeat uh, because uh, Elio, uh, my colleague Elio Rossi already gave uh, uh, a background of this, okay? Uh, I, on, I um, would like only to, to tell you if we can circulate the best practice from uh, uh, Eurega network because there is all the description in English of uh, our activities with the link. It could be useful just mm -hmm. to, to resume uh, today. Okay, it's uh, well. Uh, okay, the only thing that I think that today it was I thank you also all the speakers for the inspiring presentations. I, I took uh, some uh, hints and I hope that you will circulate also the presentation. Um, um, there is. I think I would like also, uh, I have a message from my region, but before I think that now I am I'm convinced that the message is uh, really concrete because um, I heard that for, uh, I start from Mrs. Ripad when she said that we need a commitment at your level because of course, uh, uh, and then uh, I can also mention Dr. Young when uh, she said, she mentioned disharmonize the regulation at your level. So, of course, there is a big work to do, and that's why our region is interested in supporting the launch of a European network in the integrative, um, um, integrative uh, oncology, in the, because oncology is one of the focus of the areas of our complementary medicine. So, it would be, I think, very interesting to uh, even, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Uh, Sa, uh, Sa it's quite difficult to pronounce, <laughs> mentioned, for example, the um, hip hypothermia, that is a, a, a treatment that is, can be complementary to the classic treatment that can help the effect of chemo and radiotherapy is different from, uh, for example, other. But uh, all these best practices could be really, really useful for, page, for all healthcare systems, but for the patient, for and, and to share. So I, I think that, of course, Baden-Württemberg and uh, Toscany are two pioneers in anticipating also the uh, parliament in including at public level these uh, services of integrating uh, medicine. So I think starting from these two best practices, we could enlarge and create a, a platform uh, to share best practice, to study, to share research analysis, uh, data, everything, and hoping as you mentioned, that in the future health plan, this integrative medicine could be included also with, of course, a good solid based data um, experiences that we can demonstrate. So this was the main message. I don't add anything uh, because I think uh, it's all. Uh, I don't know if I, I forget some, there was a lot a lot of inspiring points and of course i try to pass to our ministry the message so thank you very much for this invitation um, okay thank you so much for the attention to the online speakers for the patients um and uh, for the, with the to mrs ripa and the the office for uh, the great collaboration, and uh, we remain at your disposal for any additional information, and uh, we will send you some follow-up uh, material after in the next days. Thank you so much. So for the ones here, please have your breakfast still. <laughs> it will be here for another 15 minutes, so...
in okay. Teresa, yes, because I will put in contact because Elio is uh, the person who is in charge of it because we have, I mean, I'm the uh, representative of political level today and that's uh, the task uh, we can. Thank you so much. So I didn't introduce you. No, thank you very much. I'm sorry. Yes. I was really, 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 really,